Okay. Let's get today's stream started. Make sure we're all good. Gotta watch a commercial. On Twitch, here we go. Double check. Okay. Yeah, going on that. I'll get rolling on the stream. Hopefully everybody can hear me. Welcome to episode 20. My name is Brett Riley. Um, I'm a freelance character artist of the film and game industry. And for those of you guys just joining me, um, you can find me at www.bbriley.com um, where you can find my different work, um, some of my kits that I do. I'm going to go through the spiel as we allow people to join in. Um, where I uh, have done kits and a couple other things. You can find out within the about, pretty much my history, and find context if you need to drop me a line at any point in time. I always love hearing from everybody. Uh, here's some of my work, ranging from the different stuff I've done. Uh, the 2D work is more of my to you know, old illustration kind of stuff and concepting, 3D work and so on, and some of the different press that I've been trying to update uh, most of the videos I've done here, and you can always contact me through the site as well. Uh, you can also find me at uh, ArtStation, uh, just do forward slash spark. Uh, can everybody hear me okay so far, hopefully? And it um, goes over the different range of stuff I've done, some of the different games I've had the honor of working on, and so on. Um, hey, Kim, how's it going? Uh, yes, I've been printing my models and stuff. Actually, you can, uh, speaking of which, uh, on Instagram, if you want to follow me at bbriley underscore art, um, I've actually gone through and I've done a lot of my printing, kind of show you my process. Some of the different things I've done within the ZBrush Live, I was just testing out and trying to do a lot of different things to push what my Form 2 printer actually can do uh, from ZBrush to Form 2 and into the casting and molding and stuff. Hey, how's it going, Side Effects? Welcome. Uh, how you doing? Hey, Mosin. How's it going? So, Kim, if you want to just kind of follow some of that, you can actually, I've talked to some people, go through the process. Um, and I probably will be doing like a, a, a printing episode here because uh, I know it's something that's pretty cool. The, the prints that I did before were from Onage uh, in China, although I had the, I mean, they're great, but they take a, a really long time. Um, and also the shipping from China it was really a, a negative. Um, I also created a, a, a couple of friends of mine. We created a group called Grim. Uh, together we are Grim. You can find us uh online at www.wearegrim.com. This is where we actually take a lot of our different work and we create kits and stuff uh, just for fun to kind of push. So I printed up, and actually Martin just won the uh, ZBrush Live competition, uh, I mean ZBrush uh, competition here recently and got a Form 2 as well. So we have two printers and we've been kind of printing and doing our stuff and then having a caster do it for um, from there. And he's got a new print. We have a new one coming out for Grim that we'll be posting here pretty soon. Uh, but you can find again a, a shop uh, if you want to look at our kits that we sell, about us, um, this is James, and that's Martin. It's one of the few times we ever see him smiling, and there's my ugly mug. And then you can check us out in our work. You can see all the different work that we've done consistently through games, films, miniatures, um, and our press, and so on. And then we also have an Instagram, which we are slowly building at uh, Instagram.com forward slash we are grim. So hopefully you guys go and visit and kind of check us out. Um, and definitely help us. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to kind of go over top of what I did. Last, last episode I went over and I created this uh, Rakaru. That's what I finally decided calling him. Um, hey, it's us. How's it going, Alex? Um, yeah, the Form 2, Kim. It's, it's an awesome thing. Um, it's, uh, it's SLA, so it's pretty much like a, if you watch Excalibur where the sword comes out of the lake. It just kind of fits really cool to see the effect. Um, Hey, Mark, great to hear. Yeah, it's definitely awesome. ZBrush is definitely awesome. Um, last uh, episode, I kind of created a creature from different parts and stuff. I'm going to pretty much kind of continue some of this different thought process. I've been slowly in these episodes showing you how to create um, creatures or ideas from, you know, uh, scanned heads and stuff like that. One sec. Sorry. Dog is licking. I can't hear anything else. Um, so uh, uh, I decided to kind of take some different parts, some of my uh, VDM brushes that I kind of created in uh, previous creatures, and I created the uh, Rat Gorilla here. So I'm going to kind of continue with kind of concepting a little bit more using some of the new NPR filters that ZBrush kind of has later on and kind of go over top of it. Um, so let's go ahead and get started to that. 
I'm going to um, not start from a scanned head today, but I'm going to actually just borrow uh, a few things as well again, and I'm going to use some spheres. Uh, first, I wanted to show you guys, um, this is a my alien jungle. This is a thing I did for the ZBrush Beta like a long time ago. Uh, creating a scene. So I, I'm going to kind of, with the Rat Guru in mind and a couple um, different things I'm hoping to kind of create, <clears throat> I want to create an environmental scene, kind of like a snapshot of the alien world or, or, or just pretty much the concept. So today I'm going to probably work on another creature that will fit into it, just like I had this like little rhino bug. Um, you know, actually let me, let me go ahead and zoom in on them. So this is my rhino bug that I did. And then I, of course I have the different trees and I have my um, caterpillar that I actually went and created a bust for, for from Onage, uh, having it done for me. And then this is like a big bug and like the scene. So um, each was just tiny little parts, um, but together they kind of added up a, like a little cool diorama of the scene of Alien Jungle. So uh, with that in mind, I'm going to uh, borrow a T-Rex that I did a long time ago for a friend just to help him out on a project. Um, so I'm going to take parts from this T-Rex and I'm going to kind of do the sphere and I'm going to build up on it. Um, now I textured them. I had the, the texturing. This is sort of like um, uh, I did the poly painting. I created UVs for it. So if you go down to the uh, texture map, you can actually see the, the texture that I created off of the UVs and just pretty much casted the poly painting and everything else to that. Uh, so that's why you have it, but I'm going to keep that on there to kind of borrow as well. Um, but first I'm going to start kind of creating, I'm just going to borrow the body from this uh, as soon as my dog stops kind of whining. So I'm going to append in that T-Rex here. And it's, right now it's pretty high, I don't really need that much detail on it. Um, it's got eight levels, I'm going to go down a level, I'm going to go ahead and just show. And I'm just going to delete the higher, just to get rid of because I'm going to borrow some of the details but I'm going to be repainting. I'm just using some of the body for this one and I can turn off this. Also I'm going to go ahead and do, go to deformation and just unify uh, which I was hoping would make it a little bit larger. It didn't and let's just make that from the ball. So with this in mind I'm just going to kind of start creating um, probably the head of the creature. Um, as I talked last episode, we kind of talked about uh, just having fun, thinking about the type of predator or the non-predator we might want to have. Um, predators usually have the eyes that more towards the front and they're kind of more vicious and everything else. Um, even though I'm going to be borrowing from a T-Rex body, I'm going to rework this one to probably make it more into an eight, and, you know, a bird type of, you know, um, kind of creature. So first what I want to do is just on the T-Rex. I'm going to go down. Yeah, let's turn off the textures. And to do this once, even though the textures are off in here, I still have the map uh, shown. So all you have to do is just turn off the texture there. And you can kind of get it. And I'm probably just going to borrow um, just the bottom half. I'm, I'm not really going to need the top, but what you can do is to split. I'm going to hold down Control shift and I'm just going to give to my select lasso. And I'm just going to select this certain edge. Okay, and so what that does is just allows me, let me turn on, to give me a little space here to just hide. Um, Control W will make it a different group. And so as you can see right there, if you hold down Control Shift and just click on that, um, let's go back to here. And I'm just going to make those into two groups. So that way if I, it's got that sticking thing again, if I go up into my different levels, I can still have that as a separate group to hide, or I could actually just split um, from this and bring in later if I choose to. I'm just going to do group split, say OK, and I want the bottom half, not the top. OK, and hide that. All right. Hungry birds, yeah, we're just going to try to figure out what we're going to, to do with this one. I think, um, like I said, it's probably going to be a little bit more towards like the bird section, but I'm going to do some kind of like alien. I'm going to be aware of, um, you know, maybe just making the body. Uh, this is actually, um, the sphere actually has those points. I'm going to, has no geometry on it. I'm going to turn on sculptors for this, I guess. And let's just go ahead and make sure that we are on the center point 
and I'm going to just kind of start making some of the body just to give an idea. And let's make this a little bit lower. Okay. Now I'm going to just go ahead and append another sphere. And I'm going to just move this up. Okay. And I'm still using. Um, just a second. Bex, will you stop looking? What he's doing? It's like super thirsty. And so I'm thinking more like an ostrich type. Using this right now, I'm going to play with the design. I probably might make the legs bigger at some point in time. And I'm going to jump around on this. And I might actually uh, make sure my go down a little bit levels. So let's just kind of change this. That was just screaming at me, telling me that I have divisions on this. That's why I couldn't do any kind of uh, sculptress to it, but that's fine. So I'm just trying to think of giving it a long tail, just to start giving myself an idea of this. And maybe a little bit bigger legs, so this has a little bit smaller body. Okay. So on the head... Um, since we are going to kind of make this a bird and we're sticking in with the, the Rakaru kind of like make it sort of alien, um, I'm going to probably play with the fact that it's going to, um, be more cow-like in the head, meaning it's going to have some ways to kind of protect itself, um, not necessarily by like teeth or anything else like that. Maybe it's just going to be more of um, has some kind of eyes like uh, hammerhead sharks. You know, they have those eyes that kind of sweep out, even though they have jaws and stuff and can defend themselves pretty well. I think we're just going to make this to where it's a bit more aware. Now, to keep it alien, just like we were talking about previous episodes, that you know, unusual birds. You know, just two eyes, whatever. Um, as I'm going to go up in a level here, you know, maybe I might actually have it to where um, this bird might have a few different eyes. So all I'm doing is just kind of bringing these out. So let's say this is where he has different eyes because he can actually look at different, you know, up, down, left, and right. So he is able to protect himself because he is more aware, um, you know, kind of have like a sonar. Um, let's go ahead and clean those up. Just as an idea. And let's, we'll play with this and actually see if it kind of works. Uh, actually, that might be kind of too close to its neck, or I might actually have to make this, you know, give them a little bit. Let's bring this up a little bit. And I'm going to just lock that down. Want a little bit longer neck. So right now we're just playing with the silhouette. We're not doing any kind of major details quite yet. Um, just feeling out some of the ideas. Hey, greetings. Thank you very much on the... I can't pronounce your name, but thank you very much on the kind words on Grim. I appreciate it. So this will probably be the large eyes. And I actually might kind of give this more of a... Or just skull just to play with right now. And let's get in some spheres again. Where'd that go? Now we're going to kind of just... This will help when I'm developing some of what the shape of the eye is going to look like. You know, how it's going to... You know, how big those are going to be and so on. I'm also going to do, I, I'm pretty sure some of you guys have seen some really cool, um, like, look and eyes, very simple. Um, if we want to make these kind of separate from, which a lot of times I do as well, uh, you can just easily just use, like, the in-flat just to give, um, yeah, let's go ahead and turn off 
maybe just a little bit of a nod towards the iris popping out but also going down and, and let's pick up the jelly bean and let's just go ahead and just fill that color and go back to the zine ID that I like because uh, that, that way it kind of gives like a little bit of a iris and some depth and it kind of fakes out some of the, uh, the look of an eye but let's go ahead and just give it some color um, gonna fill RGB not full 100% Gotta turn off Z ad before I do that. Okay. So you can just start adding a little bit of color. Maybe make this look a little bit. Slight blue. And then you can actually on the inside. You know, so you can you can fake out some quick depth to this. Just give it that look. Once I have that eye, Subtool Master, I'm just going to mirror to the other side. I'm going to say group. Okay, and I have that eye. And let's go ahead and just, once we have this, I'm going to make sure I am on the correct one. I thought I said duplicate. Let's just duplicate this again. So I have the second eye here. I'm going to readjust, move these down. And as it goes down the neck, I'm probably going to move these in. Make sure you have symmetry on, because uh, then you can move this. Okay, I'm just going to duplicate that again. And just shrink. So. If you guys have any questions at any point in time, just ask. Um, and I'm just playing around looking for the form. I'm going to go back to my substance, my uh, sculptress, and kind of work out what I want to do here. So I'm trying to think of like if this is a hammerhead bird ostrich, just like I was playing with that. Rat Guru, last time I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do. I'm just trying to think of what kind of alien type would, you know, work with the, the previous one. So, okay, I'm going to have to go back. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to kind of move around into the different parts of my body. Parts that, you know, would help me develop if he is more... Ostrich. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go down to my levels on the, the, the previous T-Rex. Let's go ahead and just grab some of those. Because I probably want to elongate those legs to change the feel of this. Okay. And I'm going to actually split the legs open a little bit more and twist. So even though this was initially a T-Rex. I am adapting using some of the different parts. It's just a quick way, just like I was using um, some of the previous creatures to get ideas. That's all I'm doing. I'm looking for some of the shapes because uh, just because this is a T-Rex does not mean he has to stay purely T-Rex. I can you now make him thinking of, like a, of an ostrich. I can sit there and play with him. Maybe I want to play with the alien. Um, so I'm going to kind of maybe widen those hips and think of them as maybe they are more like sails um, you know that's because he's got to be speedy right he has to be if he's more prey than predator um, he has to have different types of ways to protect himself speed is one um, even though he's got these kind of claws down here we can probably reduce those down uh, make a smaller foot. Make sure I can grab this all. I'm probably going to reduce some of that claw. And twist. Just a little bit. 
and I'll probably bring in the put to win. You could actually, you know, when you have this, um, when you're working the different pieces, change everything, or you can kind of keep some of the things that might kind of work. Um, I think we need to bulk up some of this guy. I probably won't carry the wings. Uh, or I'm like give them arms like a T-Rex, even though that's why I was trying to to take this out. Um, but just worry about the silhouette. Have fun with it. Try to think about what am I making. I don't know. Just keep playing with it. Well, something kind of works. Now, um, for this to be an ostrich kind of stuff, I might have to play with, uh, you know, right now he just looks kind of like a weird salamander. So let's kind of say, since I know he is not going to be, um, actually let me save this really quickly. Um, since I know he is not going to be too vicious, um, I'm going to kind of use, maybe bring the fact that he does have a beak um, okay. to start helping with my shape. Okay. Now, this got off on the side here. If you just need to actually ever kind of get it back on, just hit home. Okay. Make sure that you center it and then hit home. And that will get the gizmo back onto the where you, you had it. And then hit your um, symmetry. So I'm going to probably give him a fairly large beak. Kind of think of more prehistoric, odd, funky. And as we're trying to find it, I actually might kind of use that for my head. I don't want to make him too cartoony yet, so I'm going to play with some of the shape and the size. Um, trying to find. Sorry guys, I'm trying to grab my move tool. It's kind of cold in here, so I apologize. My fingers are a little bit not working. Okay, so I'm going to just, I'm probably not gonna make this top of the, I mean the bottom and the top, I'm probably going to split because I might wanna bring in teeth. I might wanna do a few different things to do it. So, um, Hey, Siraj, yes, I'm a freelance um, concept character artist for the film and game industry. I kind of, I've done, done it all. So, so I'm just going to add some detail for right now. Okay, let's sharpen up this beak. And I'm going to add some depth into this as well. Now, even though he is not a predator, right? I mean, uh, if we take a look at like an ostrich or whatever, even though they don't have teeth or whatever and they run you down on a meat eater, they can kill a, you know, very easily with one kick by the power of their legs and everything else. So just because this guy might kind of, at the moment, look kind of cartoony or kind of sweet, um, you know, he will have different ways to kind of mean kill destroy so hey tensive how's it going what's up pro um now that i kind of got that beacon here this is where i can kind of add some more to the head you know bulk up some of the design let's widen this a little bit and i'm probably going to i don't know it's just usually what i do bulk up gotta have some silhouettes some hits strength um, to the neck muscle that I can kind of play with. Okay, and let me start detailing out some of this eye. Okay, all right. So I'm now starting to kind of get in a feel for this other guy. I'm going to probably bring in um, oops, a pen. And again, I think the thing is a lot of artists, a lot of people starting, they think they have to have something beautiful right off the bat. Um, no, I mean, just have fun, just try to find. There might be something that I'm not very happy with or I'm not successful. I will rip it out in a second, and that's because I'm, you can't hold it to, you know, to your art is the best thing or this is the best thing. You have to realize that um, if it's not working, it's not working. You know, you just can't keep adding detail to something that's not that strong. 
So that's why I do a lot of these um, spheres. I'm not really messing with them too much. I'm just kind of looking for the, the design. And, you know, that's why sometimes I bring in previous items that I've done that I can just toss and rework uh, because I'm looking for things, you know. So I'm going to probably give them a gullet. I'm probably going to do like some teeth up. Uh, not necessarily, you know, sharp teeth kind of stuff, but everything else. So, yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, Pro. Glad you're doing better, buddy. I know I had an MSG allergy attack a long time ago and not have fun with that for sure. So on here, I'm going to just kind of um, get a, a little bit of this. I'm going to add some sharpness to it just to make sure that it's more beak-like. And I might kind of use this as where I'll have a secondary gullet coming down. So he's not quite rooster-esque, but I'm going to kind of play with that for a second. Give myself some different designs. Good. Yeah, two shots and a pill. Yeah, I carry EpiPen around. It's kind of like every single time I eat something that I'm not too sure has MSG into it. It's sort of like a... It's a fun little eat something, wait, wait a couple of minutes, see if you're going to have to shoot yourself. So, <laughs> so hopefully you don't have to do that for too long, pro. Okay. Okay, so if I hide this, then I'm going to then, I'm now just kind of building. If you can see right there, I'm really rough with the, the, the sculpture, so I'm just trying to get some things going. I'm not really concerned about it. I'll de if I like something, I'll detail this up here a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add. And I started doing something like like a little back fin. This is where I'm I'm thinking like a sail. You know what I mean? Like he is, if he's so fast, he might have to use this tail as a balancing. Um, if his speed is so much, he's gonna kind of have to. You know, he might have more top powerful legs down. Um, let's go ahead and I'm going to mask out. Let me go to the mask lasso just so I can grab it a little bit easier. And I'm just hitting control and off to the side to switch. Because right, what I want to do is I'm going to probably bring this foot in. Okay, and I'm going to probably shrink. Use it to kind of shrink down some of the foot, less of the claws. You know, you can even, you can even say, um, Gonna pull back in that claw entirely. You know, make it very delicate. Let's go back. I'm gonna squeeze it in. And let's go ahead and lasso this other guy. Now, for animators, might be kind of screaming at me right now, kind of going, "No, no, no! We need the toes separated, um, so we can make it very easy to kind of grab." That's a little bit different. I'm not really thinking for an animator. I'm not really thinking for movement yet. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just concepting to see if it's going to kind of work. Um, so don't be quite concerned when you're in the concept stage. Don't be too quite concerned about what's needed quite yet. Just trying to make sure that the silhouette, everything else you're happy with, you like the design, and then you start worrying about, you know... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm concerned about some of the movement. I'm concerned about how it's going to, you know, work, of course. But... Um, I don't want to hurt the design just because I'm so worried about what might happen down the road. Okay. All right. Let's bring these toes up. All right. And I'm going to probably bring the this up a little bit more, thicken these legs quite a bit to get more of that power. When I do that, then I need to stretch this out, reduce. Okay. So now let's kind of get to the body here because we're kind of building the chest and how it's going to go in. And you see I have like a lot of like the T-Rex the skin. Um, I could always just keep some of this or wipe out, you know, 
some of the detail down the line. That's why I sometimes like grabbing things because it gives you, when that detail is kind of repurposed and moved around, it kind of really sometimes gives you some very cool ideas for skin textures or everything else. Those happy accidents that, um, you know, just gives you direction that you might not have gone to. So that's what some of the skin is doing. Um, might be a little bit more leathery or lizard-like at the moment. Okay, so let's go back to this arm. I'm going to start detailing out the chest, like how I want the deltoids to be. Let's go back in here. I'm probably going to think of, I don't want to do like T-Rex arms and like in front, you know, and I might want to do like the chicken in the back. Um, again, I'm trying to think of like this guy is really fast. He is kind of like a cheetah. I mean, that's an ostrich. Uh, they can move very, very fast. Uh, but I don't want to do, like, you know, tons of hair or feathers or so, you know, he might be kind of like an albino worm. He's going to have some things into it. And if I want to do anything aggressive, I can either accentuate that beak or I can add, like, more, like a bigger talon. Um, uh, or I can add some sharp points to it later to kind of make it not quite, like, he's not going to be a cow. He's going to be... He's in, uh, if we make him an alien cow, it, the, the world there is whatever, you know, a little bit more uh, vicious. So the, that character might change because of that viciousness. So um, if it was all butterfly planet, then he would just be very cute and that would be it. So um, I don't know if he's going to have whiskers. Let's go ahead and flesh him out and kind of feel he could. He could have like little um, whiskers. I think, you know, just the fact that he might just have Right now, a little bit bigger head. He might just do a head, but I need to balance his head right now because it's not enough. So I'm going to, let me see if I can throw in another sphere. And let's bring that up. Okay. Because I think he needs to have some kind of, um, not like a boat sail necessarily, but uh, like, a, you know, if, he, if it was a boat sail like this, and this is why I like spheres. Like, you could actually go, does that work? No, I don't think so. Um, but so instead of that direction, I'm thinking he might have... Um, and when you got the the symmetry on turn-off symmetry, make sure it's centered then, you know. So I'm going to probably make this a little bit larger. I'm thinking more of... Um, kind of like a triceratops type, where he might have that to flesh in a little bit. And this is where maybe he might have literally horns on. I mean, I don't think I'm going to go that far. So, uh, yeah, not like Dumbo. <laughs> that's that's where it becomes a little bit too cute. Like, you know what I mean? I, I don't know if Dumbo could survive um, in this type of environment right now. You know, they might go aw and then eat him. So this guy's going to be... Kind of. And this is where, once I do that, then I can see that I need to probably go back to here and kind of give him a thicker, thicker back neck to hold. Now let's bring the eye up just a little bit more. Now, if I'm, uh, I'm showing you guys for like the posing. Um, of the objects and stuff like you're, you're kind of when you're you're saying oh I'm, f I'm done and I'm going to pose you can actually use pose for moving pieces around and changing size because right now most of these pieces are in separate poly groups so let me go ahead and just save as really quick or on that um, so I do this as well so right now I've got pieces that I think are going to work but right now the size issue is kind of like, you know, the head might be a little bit too big, but instead of me shrinking down the head, shrinking down the eyes, shrinking down by separate tools, I'm just going to go to my uh, sub uh, Z plugin, sorry guys, transpose master. I'm just going to T pose this sucker really quick. What that does is it takes all my sub tools to the lowest level, pops them in. So this way I can then go, okay, I'm going to have all these different subgroups. And as you notice, they're different levels, which is fine. Um, but this allows me to then go, all right, well, I'm not too sure about the head um, and the eyes, but I'm going to grab my move tool, 
I'm going to just grab those and my symmetry is not on this one, so let me do it. Yikes. And so all I'm doing is I'm, I'm pulling and swiping down um, and grabbing the mask section right there. Um, if I want to reset, hold down Alt and click back in to there. Turn off symmetry and get, so now I have this piece right here as a solid section. Okay, so if I'm kind of going, well, this head needs to be smaller, I can check that out, um, you know, or if I need to move it, or if I need to kind of say this needs to be bigger, I can then go into here, make sure symmetry is back on, and then start playing with, you know, maybe some of this part that was initially good. So I'm using this to kind of play with how I want this to be. Um, you know, then I can say, all right, that might work there, but then I can actually take this, um, that's the center of that. Say I want to make this bigger. I might want to make it a little bit longer. So I can sit there and kind of go, yeah, this is kind of working, um, or, or not working, or, you know, take a look at the, the pose. I can sit there and say, well, I want to change this pose a little bit. I might have had it a little bit too, um, I want to make it more like a racer. Um, so I can actually just kind of say, let's pull this up here. This chest might be like that. And so you can kind of just say, I'm going to bring up the hips more. So now I'm making them like he's going forward. I have to play with this a little bit, my chest. And then, uh, did you just two bows? Yeah, the, yeah, render. This is basically just taking all the pieces together and throwing them into one subtool. So that allows me to kind of just focus on the shape. And a lot of people don't use the t pose as much as I think they can for things like this, because um, you can use it to kind of bring the pieces together. I mean, I could pose this guy now. In a, in a way, I am posing this character. I'm moving him around to where he is, I think, feeling better. But you can also re-sculpt. So I can come in here and say, I need to make this a little bit thicker. If I want to just grab this piece, I'm just going to mask it out and say, OK, I need to bring that a little bit to the front. You know, So I could use the, ah, sorry, I just got stuck pose like such or I can just click just on the head here um, you know usually what I do is I'll just grab oops, this little section and you can grab this by control shifting and grabbing different sections of the different poly groups or I can sit there and figure out, like, I need to make this neck a little bit thicker, but instead of grabbing everything, I'm just going to grab. Um, so I'm swiping. I'm holding on control, guys, swiping off onto the canvas. Uh, everything is is not masked at the moment. Hold down control, shift. I'm going to click on the character. That way I can just sweep a lasso around it. Now that is masked. So then I can mess with everything, that, you know, the eyeballs or, or whatnot, or I can hold down control again and click off the character to flip to say I want to make that neck a little bit thicker or, you know, play with this. Does that make sense to everybody? So that this way, yeah, it's just, it's just a way to kind of click back and forth. And, yeah, I mean, if you want, if you want to... I could say, well, if I want, you know, this this part right here uh, to be to be together. Um, make sure I didn't give any. I'm not changing the geometry. Uh, if I want to grab this piece, and I'm holding on control and this piece together, I can just say Control W, and then if I show it on frame, all this all would be one. And then I would have to remask and undo it if I want to do it this way. Um, but uh, but I'm fine for right now for the posing and moving this guy around. It's giving me some ideas of the body shape. So once I have that, I'm going to probably bring this. See, I want to get that out of my way. So 
I am posing um, in, a, in a certain term, but I am posing the silhouette. I am posing the concept, pretty much, my thoughts. Now that I have that, I'm going to probably go, okay, that's pretty good. And if I'm happy with the shapes, happy with the silhouette, again, he's kind of, um, you know, I might have to make his head bigger. I can. Um, let's try that. Oops. Sorry. Let me go ahead and hide those pieces. Okay. Just masking. We'll use that move tool. Move tool, as you notice, is off. So to reassess that, I'm going to hold down Alt, hold that little rotational key, and there's no symmetry on it right now. Then I'm going to hit that little Google Map thingy, and then this is where like I can actually stretch the head a little bit. I don't have to do a uniform scale. I can actually use these to change. I could go back to the old. Um, Transpose if I want to make the head like I'm like All right, I want him you know his head down more like he's gonna butt um, you can that's that's the cool thing about this one um, I'm using this to kind of play with my shapes quickly get an idea of what I like what's gonna work make sure I turn back on symmetry because I might want to have his neck just a little bit more powerful thick down at the bottom okay and then we're gonna come back to the eyes here in a little bit so because I'm getting them all kind of Funky. And my eye got destroyed here. I'm not worried about that. I'll just create another one. So, all right. Now that I'm happy with this, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna move on. Okay. Unmask everything. As long as you didn't, you like a lot of times I'll bring in different pieces, or if I have a pose that I was playing around with, I, I could append this pose. Um, but you have to take out every single piece that was brought in after the T pose calculation to get it back out of T pose. We'll give you an error, so a lot of people have a problem with that. So just go back to Z plugin, say T pose, and it's going to extract. So as you can see, as this extracts, I'm see the different sizes, the different pieces, the things that are moving around. Boom, I'm done. So now that's kind of changed that look of that character quite drastically. Um, I have all the same parts that I had before, but I'm playing with those shapes. I'm playing with the idea to try to kind of give myself a different direction. Even though I have those T-Rex pieces on it, it's looking further away from a T-Rex. I'm going more towards that ostrich. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and save. I'm going to add um, a different, uh, sorry, my mouse pad is falling off. I'm gonna add like a different number. So I'm saving the second version of this one. Uh, render, when I'm doing like, uh, depends on what you're doing it for. Um, uh, for games, you know, you, you pretty much just you have your low poly. Uh, it's not necessarily poly groups. I mean, you'll have different elements, but sometimes depending on the poly count, you might have to combine and bake those things together. If it's a little bit higher, you have more ability to kind of have different elements and separate parts. The poly count goes up with different, you know, separate elements. So now that I have this, I'm going to go back to kind of like um, figuring out my shapes. I'm going to flesh out before I start going to detail, before I start kind of um, thinking of the character, I'm going to figure out his arm to finish this out. So I'm going to go, and I'm probably, I was telling you about the chicken. Let's literally give him kind of like chicken wings um, to kind of and give him an elbow. But I'm thinking this is going to be <laughs> not necessarily like a turkey, um, but this is going to be more for the sailing aspect. Uh, we're, we're going off that general idea that he is a speedster. He is really fast. Um, he needs to kind of um, be able to move out of the danger very quickly. Those won't do it for me. Like that, that's not going to really help him. So let's go ahead and append a sphere again. Um, now the cool thing about right now in here, you see all these different eyes, right? Uh, right, and I'm getting, my sub tools are getting kind of long. ZBrush within the 2019 added folders. So let's go ahead and create a folder. I'm just going to call this eyes. 
Okay, and then I'm going to just start bulking some of these things together. I'm just going to grab the lower level, the lowest, uh, the next subtool. Okay, and so I've got those four eyes. I'm just going to collapse those down. So now I can actually just have those eyes, um, and I can hold down shift and drop them to the bottom because I'm not grabbing them too much um, at the moment. Just get them out of the way. Uh, here's my new sphere. I'm going to grab this. Okay, I'm going to bring this over. Now the same thing I did with the the helmet piece or the, the fin piece, I'm going to do with this one. I'm going to treat this as it's the fin. Let me save. I'm going to make it a little bit skinny. I'm thinking instead of just a whole bunch of feathers, I'm thinking about one big fin, almost like a shark fin type of things. That uh, dolphin shark. Um, sorry, it's saving a little bit more because I have the T-Rex and a couple of the pieces in there. So let's go ahead and thin that down. Now you can play before I manipulate that shape around. Um, I can play with that shape. On the draw size right here, I'm going to turn that off. See how I was like, I was I was getting limited. When you do dynamic, it's going to just kind of give you a, a, a less larger ring that you might necessarily want. So go ahead and just turn off the dynamic, tap it twice, and you should be good. So I'm going to play with this shape first uh, before I add it. Okay. And I'm using the sculptures to kind of Play with the shape just a little bit. If I want to go more drastic with the shape, then you know, do the larger size, and then bring this down. Of course, I could hit dynamic symmetry. I mean, uh, solo. If I want to sit there and just concentrate on this piece for the moment, and let's clean up this. Just so I'm going to do one big feather, okay, and give it a little bit some details. Okay. Let's check out the thickness. All right. So now that I have that, let's go ahead and place this. Now, depending on how big my fin is, all right. And before I start playing with too much of the side just like having the other eye or like doing an eye on the other side to kind of balance when you're taking you look at your character what are you creating you you should always be moving it uh, i've seen a lot of people they just get kind of stuck into one shape you need to constantly move around the object you're looking at making sure it's good you're always going to have one side that you prefer like you might go oh the front's looking cool the side's not looking so good but just constantly move it around and try to flesh them around uh, as you're going into your concept so i always try to go to subtool master and uh, just do the quick other side of the fin. Um, what did they do? Oops. I didn't mean to T pose up. Let me see. Subtool master. Mirror. Merge. I think I hit like something else. I think it was combining. Let's see what it did. Yeah. It just merged my pieces together. I'm just gonna delete that out just for save. Um, and I'm going to delete out. You can always delete these things out. Like if you ever get a subtool that's eating up, I can just... Duh! Probably should have done it. But let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and save. Project. Okay, and let's go ahead and load back up. This happens from time to time. It's great that uh, they have like the recoverable into it. So let's see if it comes back. Okay. And I'm gonna go to the, no, there's a recover tool. I have this right here that I can go to. The recover tool actually was what I was touching last. So it should have my last strokes along with the T-Rex. I'm gonna double click that really quickly. If the recover doesn't come back, because what it's doing is creating the whole scene. So if I pull that, it should be able to, nope, okay. It's just doing the recovered T-Rex. So let's go back to our quick save, holding down the comma. I'm gonna go back to the previous, the next one up. And as you can see, the numbers kind of go down. So I'm gonna have to probably recreate that wing just a little bit. And it's, it's the reason it's taken a little bit is because it's, it took a snapshot of your whole scene. So it has my alien jungle and a couple other things in there. So if you're having problems where things are kind of taking a long time to save or bring back up, it's because 
all it's keeping track of whatever I had in here so on this I'm just gonna go tool I'm gonna save as I'm gonna go back over top of what I was doing before I'm just gonna give it another number and then I'm going to close down ZBrush not worry about this and I'm going to reopen ZBrush and just load in that tool so what happens is that it just kinda gets rid of all that extra junk that is is taking a long time so hey Vig how's it going man I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> I'm showing some of the steps of what happens in ZBrush and how to get back. Um, it goes to it. So I'm just going to load up that um, my piece that I was going into. I'm going to find it again. I'm going to go to the third version. Let me go ahead and do my details and double check. I got the right piece. Okay. And there we go. I'm doing. I'm doing. Uh, uh, you guys got to check out the egg stuff. It's awesome. The um, this is sort of some kind of weird uh, ostrich bird off of my rat guru that I did last time so I'm just kind of showing some of the different versions um, so now whenever this will save which you want to have your your ZBrush save every once in a, a while because if you go too long and it crashes you will lose a lot of work um, but be aware that everything you have within your subtools even if it's not the one that you're using will save so you have to be very aware of uh, how much your computer can handle how long you want to sit there waiting and so on. So that was not something I wanted to happen, but at least it was a good example of how to fix or get rid of things. I don't know if, how many people have come across that. So I'm going to play with this shape again. And even though I had that certain shape in mind before, I'm going to change this up just a little bit. Okay. So again, I'm still trying to figure out some of like the, so he's going to use these as fins, like a shark type subtool, subtool master. I'm just going to mirror because I'm going to use that now when I'm on this piece to then get an idea of placement. Make sure you got symmetry on. Okay. And I'm using this to move. I'm going to probably give it just a little bit of a bend just for shape and interest. And let's bring this down to here. So it's an extension. So right now, it, it looks a little bit better than rather being kind of like a, you know, a chicken wing or whatever. Um, just by itself, we're using it to kind of help some of the design. Okay. And it's still a little bit thick. If I need to thin this down, I'm just going to angle the direction I want, hold down control, and I'm going to just resnap. And I'm just resetting that pivot to make it a little bit thinner. And then I'm going to move it like so. Okay. How's it going, Missile? How's it going, Freed? Okay, so now that I have that, let's go ahead and add. I think we're almost done with adding the pieces that I think would kind of work for this character. You guys got any kind of questions? Let me know. Now it's just balancing. I think on this back fin, or this back piece, I'm going to, I'm going to wipe out some of this detail. Yeah, and I'm going to change some of the length of that back. But I think for this, again, let's bring in some... Um, viciousness. So I'm going to grab this tool. I'm going to bring it up. And I'm going to make this a very just like a claw. And I might just use this right in the back here. Wake up. Okay, sorry guys. For some reason he's deciding to have a bath right during the time that I'm trying to concentrate. Water bottles work great on dogs, just as cats. In case people are wondering what I'm doing, because at least he's and actually we have movers across the street, so I'm surprised that he's not freaking out on the uh, the new neighbors moving in. 
making noises. All right, so now that I have that, okay, let me go ahead and do the other side. That's just mirror. So now I can have a better idea of making the shape. Oh, th thanks, Adam. Um, just practicing. I mean, it's just like, you know, sometimes I'm like, oh, I'm just going to do an animal and I'll just get it done. I study skulls and you just kind of um, just keep building things up. Um, the T-Rex, the I mean, I never really made a dinosaur uh, before until, you know, my friend was saying he was going to borrow one from uh, Turbo Squid and I was like, oh, shit. Let me let me help them out. <laughs> so then I just did a T Rex. Um, it, it's it's always best to kind of jump around to different stuff. Uh, I definitely studied anatomy. Um, I mean, there's there's no course necessarily on, you know, you know like uh, alien anatomy. You know what I mean? It's just uh, borrowing something from real, something real, um, because honestly, nature is scary as hell, and it has a lot of cool, interesting things, and just adapting. You know what I mean? Give just you have to give enough into reality. You have to touch like you know. I have uh, here's the deltoid. You know here's the here's the bicep of it. I'm, I'm touching upon some of what might be in a true chicken piece, right? And then but I'm adding the wing um, that becomes a little bit more uh, not believable. So that's what really helps separate things. Um, sorry, I'm getting stuck on that one piece. This again, so I'm trying to grab this front because here we go. So, I mean, that's all I think I would probably suggest that you do is just kind of try try to keep having some fun with it and look for those shapes that you could, like. Okay, that is really sticking there. Like the chicken might have like some of the flesh, but I'm going to use the weight of the gravity of, of you know this flesh piece to kind of add a little bit extra flesh use the in flat to kind of um you know bulk up that how that fat kind of intersects and then just you know it, uh, taking a look at a lot of like you ever look at those cats those that have no hair and you, you study the skin fold study drapery you know what i mean all that kind of stuff will go into you know creatures or real world objects and stuff it's just there for you you just have to kind of think about what am i what i want to do with it right so i have an extra piece in here so let's use this as like some kind of extra fat piece or section like um like males are are usually in the wild are, are very um are always trying to get the female's attention um, so that's why they're a little bit more colorful uh, they're trying to compete against each other. So let's just use this as, since I had that extra piece I didn't know I had in there, that's just some of the extra fat that kind of goes. And this could be a reverse, um, like, you know, a rooster, that's the, the heavy, I can't remember what it's called. It just, where it has that, the bigger it is, the more, you know, uh, attractive it is to the female. So that might just be like, instead of just having it in the front, I might just actually have that bit of color in the back. So I'm trying to think of different ways to kind of do it. Um, so, all right, let me get to the eyes. I'm going to finish this out. I think we're good. I'm good with the forms. I'm good with everything that um, I pretty much need. Um, you know, I've got my fins. I've got some of the different areas and objects and forms. Uh, what time are we doing? It's 2 o'clock. So, um, I spent about an hour just getting that. And today probably can't go a little bit longer. i got to go pick up my little one for his birthday weekend. Little guy is 11 this weekend. It's crazy. So, I want to try to finish this up as fast as I can. So, let's detail out these eyes. I'm going to go ahead and go back to my Sculptress, and I'm using it to kind of flesh out the depth. Now, whatever eye I do here, I'm going to pretty much carry on down. Um, so, that way it kind of helps me. Like I said, this is going to be part of where... He is more aware of his surroundings, so that's why he has a whole bunch of eyes running down the line. Um, so he can protect himself. And then with those eyes, he then can you know run away a lot faster with his speed. So okay.
and I'm just smoothing out some of the, the roughness that I had. So now with that, let's go ahead and clean up some of this, the other eyes that I was kind of using. So I'm taking a look at the shape of the eye, even though it's cut, I'm, I'm not going to borrow the back of the eye section here. I'm just going to concentrate on this little shape, make it more of a, a teardrop. And this is the alien section that I'm borrowing from. This is what's making it kind of like, okay, I mean, not that the rest of them is kind of really, you know, total realistic, but this is where I'm trying to make it go, okay, that's a very odd characteristic from this creature. And as it goes down the line, I'm kind of going to probably bring these in and treat them as smaller eyes. And that was a very good question, by the way. Adam, I appreciate you asking. And you guys asking me questions kind of help me uh, kind of think about some, some of the BS I have to do on these creatures. So I appreciate you kind of... It's like sometimes when I do um, demos, ZBrush might not be... Uh, acting the way I want to, or I might be having some issues. So questions always kind of help me give that break of, yeah, 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 let me think about it. And then I can cover my tracks with any kind of issues. Mistakes will happen, and that's part of being an artist, I think. Um, every single artist out there has issues. And anyone that kind of tells you they don't, and that's kind of, experience kind of helps you have less. I will, I will grant that. But there's a lot of happy accidents that happen. Um, I personally love looking for happy accidents. But that's why I say don't don't freak out and don't just... I don't know. I think we got to... Being an artist is a great career. How's it going, Game Lucent? Game Luencer? Sorry. Some of you guys' names are pretty difficult to, to get, so I apologize if I butcher them. Okay. So now... Bring back in those eyes, okay? And the eyes that I was manipulating around got kind of mashed when I was doing the T-posing. So that's fine though, I'm just gonna kind of readapt. Okay, especially this last one, let's bring that up. Now I could, if I was really worried about, you know, the making a perfect eyeball or whatever down the line, I could just go back to a sphere and do that whole trick again, uh, rather than doing this. But um, this is fine. Thank you. I appreciate it again. So let me go ahead and so now I'm just gonna start detailing out these eyes just to kind of help that believability. And, it, you know, there's things in nature that that um, they'll fake out. You know what I mean? Just like butterflies will have things that look like huge eyes on their wings to, to scare off the predator, that kind of stuff. So this doesn't necessarily have to be eyes that are functional. You know, they could just be a another thing just like that, this red rooster type of thing might be to, to attract a female. You could always, you're making up the character, you're making up the creature. So uh, who's to say I'm wrong? Who's to say that? This isn't what this is going to be. You know, that's part of being a concept artist is that you are constantly just trying to tell a story and you're in control of the story. Okay. Okay, okay. How's it going, Rashed? I appreciate you guys showing up today. I mean, uh, it gets lonely when you don't. Now, I, I am doing, um, I'm going to probably be doing some more on my Twitch channel. Uh, if you guys want to follow me on my Twitch channel, it's just spark underscore B Briley. I forgot to kind of keep pressing that. So, because sometimes I, I've decided I'm just going to um, jump online and just sculpt at different times rather than just specific times with uh, ZBrush live here. So, let me know if you guys want to ever chat. Again, that's just um, 
spark underscore b barley at twitch.com or wherever twitch however it goes i'm learning this stuff okay so yeah let's go ahead and i'm gonna go back to this hood finish this out so now that i have this i'm going to kind of try to figure out like a little bit different um look to it that's in the detail yes quick question what kind of material you're using just basically no this is actually the the material i'm using is called z98 it's a it's one that feels very much like a like the green clay uh, i really like the tone and it also kind of doesn't have a I, I, i've seen a lot of people use the red wax and that kind of stuff or, or or different materials that are really kind of it's difficult to tell the you know foreground middle ground and background that is not a good way to go when you have things that you're trying to do a middle ground details in it and and your material is saying that's the the foreground it, to me it gets very confusing and as you know somebody coming new into zbrush or you know trying to do a lot of the sculpting you're just making things a lot more difficult um, having a cool looking material is not the game you know what i mean if it was then you know all you have to do is just i can go oh it's a cool material and you, know, you just pop it on like yeah cool i can't tell what the hell i'm sculpting anymore it's great it's a blue bird you know what i mean um so it's called z98 uh, but everybody will have different preferences find the one that really works for you but make sure whatever you do it just has um you know a good ability to, to see what the hell you're making so okay so i'm just adding a little bit more details to this not really quite and i'm going to go back into the bird top here and i'm going to just And a little bit more of details there as well. So let's kind of flesh out some of this oculus section. Let's get a little bit more of the bumps here. Okay, I'm going to figure out the bird beak. I'll probably bring this out. Okay. The, the material of the eyes is just, it's called, all I did is I went to Jelly Bean, okay? And then I just clicked on Jelly Bean and I just filled it with the material, that's all. And then I just then turned off the material and just add a little bit of color to it. So you can add different colors however you wanna. Um, so if I'm gonna go in this later and if I wanna change this, I can um, add, and I probably will, just to play with it a little bit. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit of rough aspects to this. Let's make this beak a little bit sharper and maybe just a little bit towards the let's see um i want to probably make him more pecan not pecan <laughs> pecan let's thicken his beak so it's more of uh and let's add some sharpness to it like it's a got some bone Okay. I'm using the trim dynamic to kind of sharpen up details. And if you guys notice in my episodes, I only kind of really utilize like a few different brushes. That I do that to make it very easy for those of you that are new or following. Um, you don't need tons of different brushes. Um, you can use whatever you want, but I mean, it's like to, to get your thoughts down on the direction you want to go. It's just your skill or your thoughts. Okay. All right. That works pretty well for me. I might make his give him a little bit more dragon beak nose whatever so he's got like a little bit more interesting and i could bring this to where you know let's see this is where i have that done i could then play with some of the different placements if you are wanting to test this out um layers let's just add a new layer and let's go ahead and go to Store morph target. Let's add another layer. And let me go ahead and move this around. And you can actually just 
then turn that off. And you can kind of play with the different type of the morph so we can actually see. Then you can like turn it on and off if you want. So if I like this larger beak, which I do, you know, then you can just bake all snap. Um, Hey, how's it going? Thank you, A-Cube. Appreciate it. Got to check out her work as well. It's, it's awesome. I'm, uh, I'm making a bird that goes along with my rat guru that I made last week. So I was just kind of going over some of how he's going to be. He's going to be fast, and he's kind of a uh, funky-looking thing. So. Um, so using that to kind of play around, just the layers, stored morph targets, you can blend. Having one set of ideas from it you just do a couple because all i have to do is just turn it on if you want to make a whole bunch of different beaks you just make a once you're happy with this one you just make a you know a duplicate and you just keep going on now whatever you have visible will actually blend into the recording so just be aware but if like if i want to make this like a really thick beak you know almost kind of covers up or or whatever if i want to get ridiculous um this will i don't want to go i want to have teeth here it just takes me a quick couple seconds to test this out, you know what I mean, do I do I like this, you know, um, turn that off, yes, no, you know, if I don't like it, just go ahead and just hit the X and it's gone, so, but remember, that's how the beak was before, I kind of liked a little bit larger beak, so I'm going to keep it like such, if I want to go ahead and continue with this beak, just go ahead and turn back on the recording and continue, okay, mesh has layers on that, so I think I, oh, yeah, with your sculptors, once that layer's on, that's fine. I'm going to turn off sculptors. It's at 95. I'm going to exit my... I'm going to... Let me just go bake all. I'm going to keep that beak. I'm just going to go a couple of layers. Not 2 million yet. And I'm just going to just detail it a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. I guess, honestly, this is sort of... Uh, now I'm thinking about it, it looks almost kind of like a... Chocobo, you know what I mean? Uh, sorry, Square Enix, I wasn't trying to copy, but no, he's kind of like a very weird alien Chocobo, so. Um, and that's pretty much, and they were probably playing off, they were riffing off the ostrich stuff that I was thinking about and playing with the, because his beak, now that it's larger, it's going more towards that. So if you ever finding like you're kind of, um, because honestly, as artists, we are influenced by a lot of different things, subconsciously as well as consciously. I wasn't going that direction. Um, so if I need to kind of pull it back away, I might have to emphasize um, I, you know, make another layer and I might go down to this one and say, let's make this beak, you know, a little bit bigger. Um, so that way it allows me to get away from more alien, less away from the Kokobo that I was actually seeing. Mirror, yeah, it's a horror, horror of a Kokobo. But I mean, that's, that's just the way to kind of keep playing with things and just go, okay, what's working, what's not, let's test it out. Um, so I'm going to, I'm going to keep that, make this bottom beak a little bit more vicious because I, I don't want to. Um, have Sony uh, Square Enix uh, drop me a line unless they're looking for a character artist call me um, but no this this way it's just kind of as I'm going to bring this down a little bit and hell you know what I think instead of making this kind of um, since I was going to go like this piece right here let's fill this like if I was going to make this uh, color fill object like if this was going to be like that rooster to attract the female. I'm going to take this with, this is was tor uh, sort of turning out the gullet, but I'm going to make this, let's say this guy's a really fast runner, but he might actually use this as a weapon as well. So he's going to kind of, if he rams into you, this is where he can slice you in half. Okay. Again, this is, uh, I'm making a vicious, friendly looking thing. Um, and that way, so that's part of our design. That's where you're just kind of, you're making this up. You are kind of just trying to BS, fake it till you make it kind of thing. Um, and because I had, um, let me go ahead and bake all in this. Because I actually started seeing some of the direction towards that chocobo, I'm now changing. And now this is adapting into something that I'm creating, you know, I'm thinking. Um, because if I didn't get to point A, I'm never going to get point Z, you know what I mean? Okay. Uh, finish the alphabet. So you just got to kind of try to think of it that way. Um, don't be worried. And if it's not working, toss it out. Forget it. All right. So yeah, yeah let's use this as kind of like a sharp little blunt instrument. Okay. 
and then I could just have this skin kind of be up here. And it's kind of buried. I can come down to the secondary piece and then kind of inflate to kind of flesh up some of that little direction. Because I'm using these as layers, right? I'm not going to kind of um, just separate all these different pieces. I'm using them as different elements to kind of blend in. And at some point in time, I can go, well, once I once my concept or my ideas are done, I can kind of go back. <laughs> sorry, I, was, I am doing chesticles. Uh, sorry, that's just some of what I do. That is a habit. That is that is something that was not intentional, but uh, kind of was creeping in. But that also goes along with a rat guru, right? It kind of pulls into the believability of you see different parts of the character. Okay, uh, from the, the different world. So a lot of times I will pull in elements that was unintentional um, from one creature in a world to make it feel like it's ad adapted to it. Um, just like a lot of uh, you know creatures in our in our own world will. Kind of have similarities to things that are around the same environment it's in. Okay, I think pretty happy with this. Let's look. Let me go ahead and um, I'm going to take out. I'm going to go down a level to kind of wipe out a little bit of that detail from the T-Rex. But I do want to sit there and carry some of the skin folds. And some kind of a weight, so <laughs> thanks, Aki. I appreciate it. And I'm just gonna kind of blending. I'm gonna pop out this rib cage here, this set, okay, over top, and bury the stomach just a little bit. To accentuate, well, let's take a look at the, sil the side silhouette. So I want that kind of probably running. So let me, yeah, let's just use it as like maybe this. Um, now this is where I cut off. If I take a look at this, is where I'm cutting off from the previous T-Rex that I split. So I'm gonna probably have to bury some of that skin. And I'm using that section just to kind of go, well, this is where that hard shell piece or that, that what do you even call it, like a fin that will chop the person and have the blade of that will go back into the skin. So what I'm doing is I'm thinking of separating materials usually in a lot of the creatures or things I do, environments, pieces, it, you know, I think of like a trinity. They come in three. So if I have flesh, I'll have bone and I'll have, you know, um, cloth. You know, you, you try to have different material types or interests that help separate your design and your concepts. Um, so I have a lot of like the flesh right now. I mean, I, I could go, I technically have uh, the, you know, the blade, the teeth, the bone, the flesh. Uh, he's not going to wear a jacket or whatever. Um, but you can, you can try to bring in the different material types to where um, you might have very wet um, and then scaly back or, or a bottom that's going to be a little bit more fleshy and a rough skin um, if you can't quite do it. But I'm also thinking about what's going to happen for the next creature I might make within that scene and that's where I could bring in the different looks or the different material hits and everything else. So I'm just going to kind of Give them a little bit more of a flesh sack, some interests. Um, okay. And let's bring this up. And on the T-Rex, you actually had it to where, you know, this is his in this section that was also, I could pop that out and that can still stay the same. That's part of that believability or that realism of, off that creature that you can pull. And um, people not, might not know that it was a T-Rex anus, but there you go. It kind of, it, it, it just allows you to kind of continue with that thought um, or that piece to it. Because I'm using muscles. I'm using some of the things from this one to help my design. Okay, I'm going to this now this little flesh bit this is where i'm going to kind of probably let's inflate this a little bit as well 
This is to impress the female version of whatever this thing is going to be. All right. So I'm going to go down to, I'm going to go to geometry. Actually, I meant to go all high. Let's just go ahead and see all the detail levels on this. I'm going to probably start going up in a few different levels to add skin details, some alphas or, or whatever. Now, let's go ahead and just do alpha. Let me use a... Trying to find like an alpha that might give me a little... It probably won't, but... No, I'm just gonna have to paint. I was trying to just give it a little bit, uh, the alpha to kind of use the length and try to cheat my way to kind of creating some, not necessarily wings, but just some interest to this. Um, but I'm just going to go ahead and just sculpt in just a little. Because this is where this fin or this featherish type of stuff um, will be textured. And the texture is going to hide a lot of whatever I wasn't going to play. And I just want to use this as a sail piece. Okay, let's go back to this arm. And I'm sitting at 51. So I'm going to bring it up into a couple of millions so I can actually, this is going to help the poly paint. Because um, right now if it's too low, the poly paint's not going to have a lot of the vertex information to do detail onto it. So I'm giving that detail to help me in a second and I'm just defining out the elbow and I'm burying this arm remember that fat fold that I kind of started here I'm just gonna kind of use this this is his rib section so I'm gonna pump that out and now if you're having trouble moving any kind of item it could be, just be your poly count also double check that sometimes uh, within your dynamic subdivision, dynamic does not get turned on. This will slam down your computer. Um, but if you're still having trouble, just go down a few levels. This is why I always like to have a lot of different levels into my pieces, just so I can actually go up and down and just manipulate it very quickly. So I can, again, play with form, make sure the, the flow is working very well, and it's a lot easier for me, and then just turn it back on to get that higher level detail. So right now I'm going to probably give it its shoulder blades. I have this popping out my design from the front. I'm going to take a look. I might want to accentuate some of this Robin's crest or whatever you want to call it that's going to be coming out. So I'm going to use my move tool and I'm just holding down Alt to drop that in. And again, I'm trying to think of what the anatomy of a rooster is, you know, or, or the, you know, so this is the collarbone. So I'm just going to drop that down in. That's I'm going to pop this out. And then if I do that, then I'm going to just kind of give a little nudge to that shoulder blade coming out. OK. There we go. That way, this kind of can blend in. Or you can see more of this crest. And we can treat it like there's flesh pockets here or whatever holding that or we could just blend it in later. So all right, let's take a look at the front. I'm gonna turn on dynamic. Uh, within here uh, the dynamic um, document I mean draw you have the different color uh, different cameras I should say. So you can actually play uh, this is very important that they put in for people that are working off of like you know true you know, references or um, faces and that kind of stuff. It really kind of helps. Um, but I'm just kind of using it because I've been doing it without. I've just been kind of concentrating on the shapes. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and just give this kind of gently put in that little filling section here. Let's finish that out. And I'm using some of the skin patterns and things from the T-Rex there. I want to probably drop down, go more towards the ostrich leg, 
Yes, they have back caps and stuff like that, just not as strong as a T-Rex would. And let's drop some of the skin to make it look like there's kind of like a pocket of that skin kind of hanging off of this. So this piece right here is kind of like, a, think of it's like a shoulder blade or the, you know, the hip blade coming out, comes down. This is like another secondary odd hip um, as well. Because again, he's more, doesn't have to, you know, necessarily make sense, but that might hold up an extra muscle that this bird might have just to make it faster. Um, part of the design. So, I'll go back to here. I think I'm going to thicken up his eyes. I'm going to go back down because I was having trouble moving it. <laughs> and uh, I'm now thinking more like a parakeet. You ever seen like the, the parakeets with like their ball, their, <laughs> their babies, like they have these huge round oculus. So I'm now bringing a little bit of um, more puffiness into the eye. Kind of thinking of that. All right. Alrighty. Yeah, no, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm BSing, I'm riffing off of what, what direction I'm going to go off of things I've seen or thoughts or, or just making things up as I go. That's the great thing about concepting and, and uh, you know, <laughs> I mean, the, the characters or creatures you've seen today, is, it's pretty much done the exact same way. It's just like they're, they're not real until they're, they're made. So you kind of just keep throwing things out there and onto the wall and see what sticks, right? So And every single time I do these streams, I don't know if it's going to be successful or I'm going to like it or make a fool of myself. That's okay. That's as an artist, you know, that's why you try. You just, you know, who's to say it was successful because I could think you know, this is a successful piece and you guys can go, that's crap. You know, or I could think it's crap, and you guys, that you know, it, it's very to everybody. Everybody has a different opinion, um, and it's just you. As long as you are happy doing it, have fun doing it, then that's just honestly all that should matter. Um, just make sure that the program is not the artist; you are the artist. Alrighty, I think I'm ready to gonna go for yeah, because it's two thirty. Let's go ahead and start texturing this sucker. All right, now this, uh, the T-Rex um, that I had before, I've lost the the level below. Like this is the highest level I have. If I go back in my texture map, if I turn back on that texture, I've lost that texture because when I split that piece apart, I lost that initial T-Rex. Now, uh, I'm gonna see if that, the poly paint information should still have all that information, but I've done quite a bit to it. So I might not have that texture I did before for the T-Rex. Uh, I'm going to see right now. At least, if anything, I'll show you the process of getting it. So you're going to go up to Texture, and you're just going to Import. I'm going to load that texture that I had with the UVs. Now, if you're curious right now, does this have UVs? If you go down to your UV map, uh, you have the UV map. The poly paint is here. Colorize if you have any poly paint on it. Um, I can also, because if I right now hit poly paint, all it's going to do is just going to turn on the poly paint. It looks like it doesn't, has like an old... UVs. If I go to my um, fill, yeah, right now I have no maps right here. Except if I say fill, or if I bring this in and say turn this on. And by the way, guys, when you bring in a texture, if you notice, like right now, it's kind of going where the, the dino head is towards the top. <laughs> if you need to flip it, just go down to flip UVs on that one because uh, ZBrushing kind of way, like the ceiling's the floor and the floor is the ceiling. It's very kind of um, you know, it, it's kind of a twist. So if I then go to here and say bring in, it does. Okay, so there you go. So now I was able to bring in that texture that I have from the previous dinosaur. And if you look, it's kind of interesting. I don't necessarily have to keep this, but I can actually, um, you know, use this color that I created to con continue with this character if I want to bring it more into the leather. Just because this was a T Rex, it doesn't mean I have to wipe out everything, I can just adapt what I have. So. Yeah, the, the NPR filter. I'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen with this guy, to be quite honest, because I'm, 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 if I'm going to poly paint, again, that's a nice little happy accent, just like I did with the, the Rakuru that I did before. 
I was very surprised at how well those NPRF filters made it. Now, right now, this is just the texture. So what you're seeing is actually the texture of my T-Rex that I did onto this character. If I want to continue or poly paint with this, you need to take poly paint, uh, whatever the, the texture that you're bringing in and to the poly paint information. So you need to kind of go and say poly paint from texture. You want to make sure it's high and you say poly paint from texture. So right now, when I turn off this, if I take off this texture, all that poly paint information from that texture is now transferred to the, the character. Okay, so I can then take this body uh, and then or go here and say, bring an alpha to a color and let's go RGB, turn that off. And that's going to then transfer to the poly paint, okay? It's gonna blend. Um, before I get to poly paint, I'm gonna probably bring in some alphas because you want to make sure that um, things are high enough level to kind of get that information, clean up anything you wanna do uh, because that alpha information is going to help whatever texturing you do uh, to whatever engine you do and so on. So I'm gonna clean this up. Let's go ahead and let me bring in some skins. I, I've been doing to where I've just been grabbing um, just skins, um, that kind of uh, details. Um, if you, I, have weird, I have some very weird um, alien skins as well, but having pulling from like a rhino skins or, or that kind of stuff really helps. Make sure your addition's on. That believability, you know what I mean? Um, it just kind of gives a little bit more of that touch into the real world that will help the creature become a little bit more believable. So just adding a little bit more of the skin. And I'm going to do layers. Now, if you saw, I actually did a pull that went over top. That's fine. So I'm not going to be too concerned. On here on his neck, he is sitting up. I'm going to go one more. Oops, the division. I'm going to blend. Now, this right here, if I take a look at my polyframe, this is where I was using the sculptures, correct? And if you see right there, this detail level is not going to be good enough for do, to do a lot of poly painting. Um, but before I do anything else, I'm going to save. Um, put this back into where I'm working. And I'm going to Dynamesh this really quickly. What Dynamesh will actually do, I could actually use the Sculptress and kind of go with the, the same size brush all the way up with the whole thing. It's just going to take too long for this. Uh, so I'm just going to go down to within your Geometry tab, your Dynamesh, Blur. I'm going to knock this down to, let's try 2048. And what this is doing is going to make a consistency crossed. And let's see if it has any more problems. Now, I could bring this up to a you know 4096 what that is doing is just adjusting memory it's just giving me a consistent detail over top of this whole thing I, I could go higher but I was I was kind of nervous just because I didn't want to sit there and have this blow up on me for a stream uh, so then I can actually now if you notice this is three million uh, that allows me to sit there and go back in the details now if I want to go and have levels this is where I will just do like a zebra mesh on him and go down, but I'm not really concerned. I just wanted to have some of the details available for my skin. Okay. And that's how you quickly do it to, to go from sculptures. And I've done a lot of videos where I've gone through and showed how to clean up from there. So just go ahead and go back and, and uh, watch that. Now, just because I'm doing this doesn't mean I'm gonna. I can. I can't wipe back out. I can't blend a little bit. I'm just using this as a general base for for most of this character. I'm actually gonna probably bring in, as you can see right here, that detail got pulled a little bit. And all I would, all I could do is like I can say, um, Dynamesh and to get more detail, but. I already have that texture, not really worried about it there. Just trying to blend this in. It's about one million. Okay. Now 
Uh, let's go back to this little piece right now. This is at 53. Let's just go ahead and kind of bring this up a little bit. Now, since this is going to be kind of like the little weird goblet thing I was thinking about, I'm just going to not do too much skin detail on it. Maybe do a little bit folds. Because I want this material to be a little bit different of a type of a hit. Might do some if I want to trans like uh, translate the information from like where it blends a little bit more. From this piece to that piece, I can bring in a little bit and stop. But let's bring in another type of skin type for that. And I'm going to go to... Kind of like a weird Pocky. And I'm going to use this alpha to kind of make it look diseased. So, you know kind of help some of that skin kind of fold up on itself if I and once you do that alpha you then you can use inflate to kind of bulk up a little bit you know and then I'm just using in flat and then I'm just kind of using my um, smooth brush to kind of smooth out a few of that little details I'm gonna alpha that again okay that's how you kind of get some diseased looking skin pretty quickly. I'm not saying you guys are going to use that all the time, but there you go. Okay. And this is where I think the um, NPR filters is going to really, that will help translate a little bit. Okay, it will pick up all these little pits and valleys and stuff. And as it goes to the back, it'll get a little bit larger. Okay. Let me go ahead and go to a different, now that I kind of have that disease kind of look, I'm going to go probably grab some pimples from the face and just add some like tiny little tertiary details to intermix okay and again probably you know once I have that here I'm just gonna probably bring a little bit of this down from the chest definitely onto the chesticles that's what you're so called side of the ribs because again that's gonna help make that believable in that transition. Now if I hold down alt I'll get the you know because pimples are usually they go in it you have the, the pimples in and out dimples information all that kind of stuff you, you just want to kind of add that and I'm carrying some of this the different parts of the body to make it work. Um, let's just kind of bring some to here. Okay. And whatever alphas we already kind of have, I could quickly just go back and pull um, from that. All right. I think the rest are kind of bones. Not really worried about it. Uh, if I want to have some more cracks in information into the this, I can actually use, you know, an alpha to kind of like, let's say if it's just a little bit more broken. Okay. That's also kind of give me some inf information that helps. And we could actually use that alpha to kind of say maybe on the beak he'll have some kind of information um, like broken. Let's not have it so. It's almost, almost like rock pieces or whatever. Let's 
that doesn't work, just wipe it out. I overdid it. Or you can just use the undo until you get back out to where you want as well. But I probably want to have this broken up just a little bit more. So I'll keep with some of that idea. separating the jaw from the flesh. And since I have that there, I'm going to kind of use inflat and such to separate from a hard piece, the beak, to where that sits. looking for forms. I'm looking for um, places where the eye can rest as well. If I have too much detail, I don't want to overtake the eyes. Um, I'm going to give them some kind of interest. This beak is starting to get in front of this one eye. So again, that might not be very believable for that animal. So I might have to kind of say, well, due to that beak being a little bit larger, I might have to bring this out a little bit wider. Okay. If that one goes out, then let's just go ahead and use this as here and then just go back to those eyeballs and just move them okay so now that you know and I'm, I'm kind of using this to kind of run down the neck make it kind of like a tear uh, you know like dun 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 you know. so these eyes are leading you down, and what I want to do is then, as you're leading down, I need to bring some visual interest to kind of lead your eye to this blade. Um, so let's define out this blade a little bit more. Okay, it's thickening up the. I'm separating the flesh and the detail. Just a little bit more. Okay, there you go. Let's get to polypaint. Okay, utilizing um, the polypaint that I have from the T-Rex, I'm gonna borrow some of that. Let's go ahead and save. Is there any questions before I kind of hit to this? Because it's three o'clock, I gotta I'm gonna switch over um, from my material to my Zebra Illustrate. That's the, the piece that I like. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on all poly paint. Um, now some of these pieces have picked up the poly paint, so I'm going to go ahead and just um, mix this. I'm going to borrow probably this brown, and I'm just gonna say fill object. So I'm gonna use this dark brown to kind of get some of these pieces filled out here. Okay, everything that is kind of skin. Uh, my, this is going to be kind of like bone. Okay, and once I have that color, let's go ahead and flesh this out. I'm going to, I like to have a tendency to use like uh, alpha at a certain level just to build up on the color. Let's start with the color of the beak. Um, I want to go into the depth. <laughs> Thanks game, I appreciate it. And I'm just going to kind of make this dark in this section. I'm using that light bone kind of feel to it at the moment and then I'm going to just kind of keep adding it. I could use different colors that I already have if I'm going to kind of keep this consistent with the T-Rex, if I'm not going to wipe it out too much. Uh, just because this was a T-Rex um, texture to begin with doesn't mean it's going to look like a T-Rex after I'm done, if I blend this all together. 
So you can borrow specific colors from this and make it work. And let's go ahead and just get some red into here. I might bring a little bit of the red near the nostrils just to kind of show there might be some kind of fleshy bits. And whatever I've done in here, I'm going to switch and I'm going to start filling out that color for this piece. And borrow, because this is going to be a beak as well, even though it's not separated. If you're, if you're not seeing a lot of your swipes happening, if it's not happening fast enough, go ahead and just up your intensity. To get that beak. Okay. I'm going a little bit lighter as I go to hit some of the highlights, some of the rocky separations I was putting in. Again, trying to think of how this might kind of look, I'm thinking uh, um, this is um, a creature that's trying to get an attention of the female or, or ward off with its designs. Um, it's not going to necessarily be a character that's going to blend in to the environment, um, as I figured out. Um, do I have any general tips in the beginning? I've been trying, honestly, uh, again, to kind of give you guys um, some general tips how I go about it, just to help. Um, within my, I have done, this is my 20th episode, so uh, you can probably go ahead to watch the beginning episodes and, and um, it's just basic brushes, basic thoughts, just looking for design, starting from some different pieces might help um, and building upon that. It, uh, it just takes time, honestly. But you can, I mean, ZBrush is the most powerful tool I've ever used. It's, it's intense. So you have to just kind of take it slow and, and not expect... Um, well, I mean, use more of your talents um, and don't get overwhelmed by all. I mean, there's so much you could do within ZBrush, but just don't get overwhelmed by it. Just use, I'm using simple brushes and simple things just to create, not getting any kind of tips and tricks um, to do the, do the creature or do the pieces for me. Okay, so... Let's go back to this piece right here. I don't, it's two beat red right now. So I'm going to borrow um, probably like this red texture that I started. I'm gonna to tone it down a little bit. And you wanna make sure that I'm, I'm on both sides. I've got the symmetry going across. So actually, let's go ahead and color. I'm just gonna fill that. To, so that way it's pulling in some of my color that I had before, blending the two at 70. So that way, it snapped and helped me out a little bit quicker than just doing tons and tons of swipes. I'm using this darker one to kind of place it, ground it um, into the body. And then I'm gonna pick by holding C, just tapping C to grab that color. And then we're gonna go add a little bit of highlights to some of these different bumps. Not going too quickly, just slightly building up. and blending with the colors that were underneath. Because again, this is sort of like his, hey, look at me kind of thing. Okay. Um, just because this is red doesn't mean you don't, uh, like there's no blues or anything. You need to kind of Blend. Uh, if you ever looked at like turkey necks and that kind of stuff, they have a lot of the variations like that. That's the like vein colors and a whole bunch of different things going back and forth. Um, so I'm going to bring in a little bit of this blue and blend. Okay. And then I'm going to probably pick up some of what I did here just to bring in some of this blue and detail into the front of the neck here. Because now I'm trying to separate out the difference between the hard flesh 
to some of the softer, more um, skin color that's going to grab attention. So I'm grabbing what I did there and separating out my flesh separation. And yes, sometimes I babble because it's hard to think and talk and chew gum. I got a night chewing gum. So I apologize if I'm redundant on some of this stuff. Thank you, Benjamin. I appreciate it. So let's pick up a little bit more of this lighter color. This is more of the warmth. Let's bring that there. And I'm going to let it blend into the beak just a little bit. Not too much, but just enough. Now, if, I, if I'm if i looking at this and, and the colors are getting a little bit too much, like if I did too much of the blue, I'm just going to blend that out. I could always just go back over and pick and pull from the different colors to help balance. Okay. Now, let's pull this skin tone in because it's pretty dark. I'm going to start grabbing. I went to the dark down here. I'm going to grab kind of like the mid of the T-Rex. And I'm going to kind of start blending some of the different colors from that onto here. Okay. Got a little lighter. And as I go to the lighter sections of this, I'm going to start doing it to under parts or sections of the skin that's hanging down a little bit more exposed because this is going to go to the white to blend in here in a second but I need to have that transition using that alpha to kind of blend from here is there any questions on this guys or okay let's go to the white so I'm grabbing the higher. trying to blend in. Now, what would be easier for me to do? Uh, now that this is concept, if I'm having trouble separating these two um, uh, to where you're kind of noticing the difference, all I have to do is just grab that whole body and just and it will translate a little bit better rather than just kind of grabbing um, the color and trying to make it work because this is not quite working here. Uh, or I could actually just use it to where I'm just doing like a, a darker color to the T-Rex portion and just kind of knock that back just a little bit and blend in the previous skin to that one. Okay. Uh, now this is just for you guys. I'm goofing around, so I'm just showing you. I'm just showing some of the different. Um, I mean, I, I I guess the thing that could come into portfolio. I mean, to be quite honest, I, I'm stuck usually to NDAs and a whole bunch of stuff. Like there's a couple games that are just releasing that I don't know uh, because I was freelance on it. I'm not too sure if I could actually share that with you guys. So at some point, if I find out I can, I will let you know. Because I did about 16 creatures for the game. Um, so I had a lot of fun on it. That's the bad part of being freelance. Sometimes you really can't say how many... I, I mean, I've worked on over 31 games now, but I can't I'm not listed on all 31, and I'm not even able to say some of the games I've worked on. I can't even still show characters on the game I've done, and they've been out for quite a few years. It's just part of the part of the deal. So you have to do more work to get work. So this is where the non-NDA stuff. So I work a lot. 
Okay, so I'm bringing in some of that little, using the different alphas to do this. Um, I'm going to go back to the neck here and I'm going to blend this. I'm going to pick up some of the red and blend in the bottom part of the neck because I want to step out and separate out this like little bone shard that I'm going to be doing here in a second. Okay. And then I might actually bring in some of the red near the eyes. There we go. And then let's And kind of using this to pitch out some of the different highlights. And by having the alpha and having this kind of slowly blend, it doesn't, it's not like a quick snap. And you, you know, so you can actually see if things are working very slowly, which is good. I mean, you want to kind of take your time seeing what's going to work um, and trying different things rather than just kind of like all of a sudden you're like, whoa, you know, that's why I, I, I like to build up uh, using some variation. I'm, I'm never at a hundred on the blending, it just doesn't work for me. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go to back to this T-Rex section. I'm going to blend out some of, just a little bit of the scaling might grab that darker top. And then whatever my wing colors are going to be, this is where I need to, this is another, again, kind of, um, let's go to like, let's see. Let's see if a blue or hell, even a purple. Since we got some of that purple, let's do purple pinkish. Okay. We could always pull it back. <laughs> but although, um, because a lot of the times when you got games coming out, the less people it looks like you have on it, the more impressive the game becomes. So. Um, there's some there's some great games made by very small companies or a small group of guys like you know um, my friend Tor just like did out this one game where there's six of them they did it's phenomenal but there's games that are like have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people or you have people that uh, they hire outsourcing companies that have tons of people working for them but they just say they just list the outsourcing house they don't really it's part of the contracts part of the whole bunch of things goes on every company's different I've had it to where some companies are just like they'll they'll list us and um, uh, and they're they're happy to share the credit, but some some don't. So that's just the the weird weird thing. But that's understandable. That's part of you. You take that risk when you do freelance. You're just trying to help um, and work on cool projects and stuff. But it's really depending on the sometimes the publishing. It's the more it's not the developers necessarily. It's the publishing house that makes those decisions. They put the money into it, and then that's who makes the calls. So let's see, let's add some highlights. Okay, so I'm going to use some of the highlights here just to kind of separate. Remember what I said, I'm not gonna to put too much detail into because I was hoping to bring out some color to help separate. This is what I'm talking about. Now, just because it's a purple right now doesn't mean it's going to stay. I'm still playing with that color. Um, this horn, this is more of, um, I was thinking more of um, a bone, which I think I might kind of keep. I might actually just kind of say, yeah, this is going to be the bone. Let's bring out some highlights on it. Well, it's it's definitely cool, but like I said, I have games that I've worked on that... that like I still can't say <laughs> and and you guys would be playing the, the characters I created running around it's just it's just part of it but I that's why I, I, honestly that's what pushed me to do competitions and 
um, other things to get out there to and do what you know. That's why I'm very like I I do, you know. I mean, I make chesticle creatures on my own time because that's what the hell I want to do. You know, that's where I'm very, you know, um, to when somebody kind of go, why don't you make this? Is because I damn well don't want to. You know, that's you as an artist, just do what you think is fun and, and having other people tell you. Um, you do that for the money. You do that for the family. You do that, you know, but whatever is going to be nasty to you. But your own time, and make whatever the hell you want. Just have fun. So this is my, I don't know what the hell to call it yet, but let's go ahead and flush out. I'm going to bring in some of like this lighter tan to the back here to help blend just a little bit. It was a little too dark. And let's bring in some of this underneath color, some of the skin. Okay. And again, this was, a, you know, I had a part of a T-Rex. I had a couple of different things, but it's sort of, you know, now I'm just kind of having fun. Now that this color, I'm going to go back into the... The color of this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna see what kind of I can do with the eyeballs. They're a little bit too. Okay. I'm gonna darken this down. Some like the blue. Okay, with that, I'm going to bring in a little bit of a, the blue hue underneath the eyes. This is part of like, you know, just adding that little touch of realism. Some of the different colors, it's not always one section of color is going to be one area of the face. You're going to, you're going to blend it around. It's a little bit too much blue, just Grab a color that's close and pull it back. Yeah, it's just, well, I mean, honestly, if you guys saw the amount of characters I have in my trash, I can't show you. It's kind of, uh, <laughs> we'd be busy. I'd be in episode 500 right now. So it's just, just what you, you need to do. Okay, let me bring up this bone piece. Let me go ahead and grab... And uh, if, if you're worried about, like, let's say if you like this color, if you notice that when I was doing my swipes, I kind of went over top, just go ahead and just mask out. I'm holding down control just to mask out the place that you just want to protect. Um, I mean, you could actually just go, uh, I can do this pretty quickly too. I can just mask out the section I want. Okay. I'm holding down alt control to get the, to wipe out. Control shift and then color fill object. So I can bring that up a little bit. And once that's kind of protected, then I'll just kind of switch out for this. And bring out some of the highlights. So that way it's a quick way to give you a chance to protect what you'd like on it. And um, I'm going to save really quickly. Uh, sorry, so I want to get into 3, but I don't know how to start. A lot of people say it's good to start with 2D. Should I start with a first program, get it right into 3D programs? Uh, Honestly, it's like 3D, you just get into the 3D, you just, I mean, it's depending where you want to go. Maya is a little bit more towards, um, you know, animation, Max is, you know, modeling. I mean, there's a lot of different things you could do, ZBrush. You don't necessarily have to do 2D. I mean, I came from Disney, so I did, but, um, you know, it's just, I'm using this in a way to concept, um, you know, based on my 2D ability, like what I actually, am, you know, a lot of my drawing skills, the anatomy, everything I've, I've kind of learned on. So, um, 
but there's so many different ways. I, I teach and usually I kind of do, I, I make sure that you can do like environment pieces and stuff. Um, you're solid because there's a lot more jobs as environment artists and you kind of build up. A lot of people want to be like, I want to do characters. Well, you know, unfortunately it's just, there's a lot less characters. Um, there's a big challenge for it. So, um, but you still have to make a lot of pieces. Like I remember one character, I had like 40 different environment pieces, you would say, like, uh, you know, cans and everything on his back uh, for Rage. His, his name is Stu. He was just, you know, if I didn't know how to do a lot of the environment stuff, I would have been kind of, you know, stuck. If I didn't know how to just do if I was only pure organic, um, and I, you know, and then I've concepted on characters and done quite a few different things. It's just, it ranges. So just drop me a line if you have any further quick kind of questions I can go into it. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's like, a, I mean, pro said, it's like, I mean, if you're a good traditional artist, I can teach you how to do 3D a lot easier than I can somebody that doesn't have that traditional ability because you're developing the eye. I mean, it's like tech is one thing. I can teach you tech pretty easily developing the eye is going to take years and just there's no way around it there's no shortcut um, you know not to not to sound like you know when i was young you walked up a hill both ways in 10 feet of snow but seriously that shit's like that it takes a long time and that does not come easy a lot of work and that's why I, I think it's kind of funny i've seen a lot of people today when they're watching the episodes you know what i mean they're kind of like you know make it faster you know why is it taking so long to create this stuff it should just be done really quickly I, i'm it's not going to happen it takes time so okay okay let me deal with this wings this is a little bit too purple now i have the colors the balance even though i have purples and blues in here this is getting kind of like a high pitch i haven't really touched too much on the i'm going to knock back the skin a little bit right here Darken down back just a little bit. I'm going to probably borrow this darker blue and start knocking back these wings. I'm going to go to color and just kind of fill because I want a little bit more believable. Color got a little bit too high in the value range, a little bit too visually impactful. I want to see some of this. So I might kind of i got to be careful about not borrowing too much color from my flesh pieces because then this is going to feel more like a flesh rather than a wing design. So, um, like if I just touch upon a little bit of this. Let's see. Hey, Jacko Bunny. How's it going, man? Thank you. Appreciate it. you got to check out Jacko Bunny stuff. It's phenomenal, too. I mean, it's just, it takes time, so just don't, don't rush yourself. I mean, um, there's, there's no one way, and there's so many ways about things to do it, so just don't, um, if you, if you, if you're doing 2D traditional, if you're study from life, that's always a great way to go. It's not going to hurt you, um, but you need to also learn those programs that you might be kind of using. I actually use like six, seven programs. Am I a master at all of them? Hell no. I mean, there's people that just destroy me, and I'm like, how do you how do you keep all that information in your head? Um, so it's just... Uh, but I, what I do is I try to re rely on a lot of my traditional ability, to be quite honest, is bore through this stuff. So, um, like, I've, I've had another artist tell me, it's like, I just used... It's crazy, you just use a standard brush, and you just, you know, you should be doing this, 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 and this. And I'm like, well, no, I'd, I'd rather just depend on my... Traditional skills are some of the things I know just to, to do the things I want or, you know, I do learn new techniques, of course, but um, I'd rather rely on my talent or my traditional ability than just some kind of button that I push. Because to me, that's not the artist. Me doing this is where the art comes in, where the fun comes in, to be quite honest. So, okay, so I'm bringing in some of that color. I'm going to... Bringing some of that color down the, the back here as well. So I can blend with that tail. It's not going to be strong, but it's just going to give you some of the visual. Again, I'm, I'm leading the eye in my design. And let's get some. And if you guys notice, I'm bouncing around in this. 
I've got to get going here pretty soon, but the, uh, I'm just trying to take those colors that I was working in certain areas and I'm bringing around. So let's concentrate a little bit of the values on this character. He's almost done. Uh, I'm pretty happy with him. That red might be a little bit too red. So now that I've got this kind of purple, I'm going to kind of knock back that red just a little bit. I want it to be seen, but not, you know, hey, look at me entirely. Um, let's go back to here. And I'm going to actually give some... Because uh, right now that piece is just kind of plop sitting on top of him. So it's just like it's, you know, like if it, if he slides back and forth, he's going to kind of, you know, flug, fling it around, which is great. I mean, that's kind of like a turkey if he has that. That's great. But I want to um, have this be set in to where it kind of sits a little bit. So let's go back out of here and let's just draw up. And if, if you have trouble seeing color, um, you know, if it's kind of where the color's getting in the way of what you're seeing you're sculpting, go ahead and just turn it off the sculpt. I mean, I'm fine with like, you know, um, having a different color. Like, I mean, it's kind of pink, but I'm just kind of Kind of pull this flesh up just a little bit. Make it look like it's kind of caressing or holding that. And I'm just going to add some detail. Just down. Because that way that just kind of helps me. It's part of the design. Again, leading your eye down the tail and that's not quite a big fan of having that set in so much I might actually kind of get a little bit thicker okay so now when I turn back on that see how that kind of just will sit a little bit uh, so it feels like it's the body's kind of protecting it. Um, let's go back to the alphas. Let me turn off my addition and go back to my painting. Let me get a little bit more of where... I brought in some light and some color and then I'm just going to kind of blend. I'm, I'm trying to mix those colors together so so it's, it's kind of like you have to have you know um, a reason for you know those pieces to go and sit and then again I just thought of that guy in motion and like you know if, if that guy's running from something and he has this big fat sack in the back flipping around hitting his hips and everything like that he would crash and burn so that's just going to be kind of maybe this is his heart or his brain or I don't know what the hell it is but at least I'm trying to make it to where it's sitting into that um, and I can even, you know, bury it up. I can, I can try to, to do it where it's the hump, or take that out entirely. That's a good thing is that once you have those, you can just kind of say, all right, is that too much? Um, just pushing and pulling. I might want to do that to where maybe it just comes. Not so much. And I'm borrowing what I had from that T-Rex underneath. I'm using my move tools to kind of just play with it, seeing what works, see what doesn't. I think I might just kind of keep that to where we see more of his back. Okay. And still use what I did to protect that little... And I could have just done like a little layer, and you know, just to go back and forth, but I'm, I'm rolling with it. And then I'm going to bring in some of this color. All right. So I've just changed the design, you know what I mean? So now that this is a little bit more to where still oops trying to get the little fat sex there you go all right there we go so I'm just kind of blending and sitting now let's go to this piece feels a little bit left out so let me just go ahead and blend and I kind of have like that, um, like stripes. So let's bring in some of the stripes just to help. Where's that little, there we go. And I'm gonna bring up the stripes a little bit. I 
if that's not working, like if if the uh, I don't know, this might just draw the stripes, draw some zigzags, blend it out. So. <laughs> No worries. Thanks again, Jacko. Thank you, Lorraine. Appreciate it. All right, so now that this guy, I think, is pretty much good to, well, to where I want to keep it, um, I think the wings kind of work. Everything is kind of doing. I'm going to accentuate the the values because those are a little bit lighter. Um, I'm starting to not see the eyes where I kind of want to see the eyes a little bit more. So either I can pump it up with color to kind of get a little bit more of the red into it to kind of help lead your eye around that. Um, okay. So I can bring in some like color like that to kind of like say that's the eye, which might work. Let me go back to, or what I could probably do is just darken down the beak a little bit more to push the value down. So I'm going to grab that and go a little bit darker just to pull this. from the eye a little bit more. I can still bring in that color. I'm just going to kind of blend those two together. And once I do that, I need to bring this color to the same thing here. Maybe add some to the tip. If it's ever too much, just go ahead and just pull back. Blend back and forth, back and forth until you're happy with it. Um, but I think the thing is I need to concentrate on those eyes. And I'm jumping, I'm using the control to kind of flip to the different pieces here within my silhouette. So I'm just darkening that down. I think I just need to go into here. Let me turn off my alphas. I'm going to grab this color and I need to brighten up some of the details. So that was a hundred. Never want to be a hundred. And so I'm just going to tap and draw on some line details, pick up some of the highlights where, you know, skin might happen to be rubbed or, you know, hit. And then whatever I did in that one eye, I'm going to kind of try to bring some of that detail down into the other eyes. Again, to showcase, even though this might, these might be realized, they might not, they just might be something to just kind of fake out. But as you can see, when I hit that value, when I show more of that highlight of the value, those eyes pop out. And that's what you, you have to be very aware. Color is very dangerous. Um, that's why I've always really hated it. Because I was I was always felt like I was it was too much for me to handle. The sculpt I could deal with, you know, I, I can take it some time. But once you do color, you have what, millions and millions of colors. And you have value and everything to pay attention to what you want to bring out into your creations. So just be aware. Um, that's part of the main thing, is just the value is going to really showcase and lead your eye and affect your design big time. So I'm going to kind of scratch up a few things here and there, lighten up the top of that head, blend. Let's go ahead and do an alpha and let's bring in, I'm find an alpha that I like. And I use this alpha for the back bumps, but I'm going to use this to kind of bring in some variation and break up. Um, if it's too much, you just kind of, again, go back over top of it. I'm using different colors, and I'm just kind of pulling that to break up the skin. So okay, here in the back, I'm using that to transition from the front to the back skin. If it's too much, just grab a different color and pull it back. Still having that same alpha. Okay. Okay. It looks pretty good. So let's go ahead and save this and I don't know if I'm necessarily going to be able to pose. I've got about 10 minutes here. So let's take a look at um, bringing in that object into NPR filter. So hit comma, and I'm going NPR. 
filters and I'm going to choose the cartoon render. Let me just say no. I've already saved it. Okay. And let's go ahead and turn off the floor and then let's just go and say load tool. And I'm going to open up that tool again that I had. So Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's very correct, Jack. You echo that you, Jacques, you kind of like, once you bring this into a different rendering, all these little details will kind of show up. That's the great thing about, um, you know, this as well. It's like once you, I mean, right now, that's just, all of a sudden, that's pretty wicked cartoony looking thing. It's taken a lot of my design or my colors and kind of intermixing them. So things that I was paying attention to, the values, the separations, everything will, will bring uh, this to light. So, um, now, I could actually, before I've done this, I could have actually gone to pose him. So I have levels on some of these things, but not much. But if I want to sit there and try to pose them, let's see what we got. Let's see if we can do this. Um, I'm going to do T-Pose mesh, uh, mesh, see if it breaks down. I might be able to open up the mouth. I might be able to do some tricks to sit there and give a little bit more of the life, but not too... All right, so let's see if we can T-pose it. So I'm going to kind of just click. This is because this is a, I'm going to turn off dynamic division two. Because this is actually a, a separate element, I'm just holding down control and knocking it back. Yeah, it's crazy how this looks like a finished drawing already. And I'm going to kind of just on control. Control shift would actually get me to the, um, off the character. Let's go here. Now, um, I'm going to just use my move tool and give them a little bit. Okay. That's my blade. I'm going to control, hold down, shift. Uh, I'm sorry, control. I'm going to go to lasso and I'm going to grab this and I'm hitting control. What I'm going to try to do is to sit there and slightly turn his, well, let's see how much I get. Up. Let's grab more of his body. Because he doesn't have a lot of levels, he's pretty heavy. So I don't know how well I can turn this guy. But what I'm trying to do is give him a slight little turn. So, um, okay, he is pretty heavy. So when I make some slight movement to this guy, like let's say if I want to turn him, his body a little bit, it's pretty rough uh, because this is so high. Um, as you can see, it's pulling quite a bit to this character. So this head needs to be kind of reduced. But as you can see right here on the uh, this piece, the T-Rex piece, I actually have a lower version of him. So I could actually take it to where, um, let's just go ahead and see if I can move his leg. Just to give it some variation. Jax, you're fine. Okay. I don't know about that. So you can kind of try to make him move just a little bit. I'd rather like to cock his head in a couple different things, but um, I think to pose him really well, like if, I mean, I could do probably his tail. Um, I would really like to have done different levels so I can move this a little bit better. I can, you know, give him a little bit of motion. I don't know if I can deal with his arm. I'm going to try to grab, ugh, see how it grab some of his body. So this is where it, it won't be pretty. It's better to not really try to mess with it. Like, you know, if you just want to widen his arm out a little bit. 
I mean, hell, I'll just I'll show you what I'm talking about. So let's say if I just want to have his neck. Cocked to the side here. And this is, think of this as the transpose master is kind of like when it's going to be um, his, his vertebrae. Okay, it's twisting. Okay. So once you're kind of like, okay, that's not too bad. I gave a little bit of asymmetry. I gave a little bit of motion to him. He's got some things going. And then you can just kind of take him back out of T-pose by going down to transpose master and extracting. It's going to pull it out. So he's going from the general standing situation to kind of give him just a little bit. It's going to go through every single one. The more you have on the different levels, the easier it is to manipulate and pose uh, for the concept. So I would have probably cleaned this up and, you know, as you can see his head, I opened up his mouth a little bit, did a few different things, rotating the eyes, you know. But to me, he doesn't look as looks kind of funky like see how his neck got pulled over a little bit too much I mean I can go to each individual one but that's for the transpose so I would probably just go you know what I'm not gonna borrow that one I'm gonna go back to where he's just a stationary pose as the concept and then clean it up better to, to do um, so there he is so now um, if I want to check on my filters let's go to filters I think I chose the last filter was this one um, to actually see your filters, you just need to do the BPR rendering. It's going to go through, it's going to break down, and then there you go. Now, um, it's kind of light. So if that filter is not working for you, if you need to kind of change it, you can go to individual filters, or you could just and manipulate those filters, or you could just kind of try for another type. Once you kind of see them, you can just kind of double click on them. And I'm just looking at the bottom to see if there's anything that I kind of particularly like of it. And I'm trying to find that comic book one. I can't remember where it was at. Yeah. Um, Now, if there's if the colored one's not working as well as you want, or if it's too kind of sketchy, you can make your own. And this is where um, I don't have time to do that. But what I could do is just kind of let's see. Let's go back to this one, even though it's kind of light. I have a tendency to like it. Um, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit. So let's check our perspective. Draw. Let's do some of the different perspectives. Let's try 25. Deep air rendering. Okay, it's pretty good. Now, if you click off all the poly paint that we've done, uh, if you just want to see it, just go down to edit and go to the black and white. So that looks kind of like a drawing. So you can have, without the poly paint, you can have that information off as well. But I think with the poly paint, it's pretty good. Now, the filters, Once you, if I did the filter like that, um, I can't do a snapshot of it. But you can do to where you um, do a snapshot, take a picture or whatever, snapshot, and then open up Photoshop and then just paste the different pieces and stuff and then you can kind of bring in the final ones. 
Um, I think that's probably the better way to, to go. stuff on my other computer okay and so once you're once you get this thing set up then you can just you know rotate print screen and just grab those pieces and bring them together So once you have these pieces, you can just kind of make a sheet of them and try to say what's, you know, um, how it looks together. And then just make a scene of, it, of your character. And you make a scene and you're done. For the NPR filters and stuff. So... But I think that's pretty much it for today's episode. Um, you know, even though I kind of still don't crash on me. I wish it wasn't so dark. So. Uh, let's see. How much does this type of rendering improve over a previous pipeline? Quite a bit. Uh, well, I mean, this allows me to kind of do a lot of different things that I wouldn't normally... Um, it's, it's jumping me back into more of my concept days, to be quite honest, because I could do this quick rendering, play with some different filters based on my thoughts of my creatures, and then just kind of, you know, it's done. Um, it's giving me filters that I could actually make my own type to make it look like it's, you know you know, properly filters or whatever, and that's my style that goes into the concepting. So it plays a lot into it. Just like those who are really good at doing certain styles of renders and setups, it just, um, it's a quick drag and drop. So, um, and it's just fun to kind of play around with, to be quite honest. So, and more people will do this just like different materials. Now, granted, there's thousands of materials out there and I only use a couple, but, um, and I'm probably going to do that with filters, but having that option where more people can put their own type of filters and share them and do whatever, it just makes, um, like I called this beta that I was in with them is, I called it the comic book beta um, or the concept beta because it really made me feel like all of a sudden, oh, I could jump into that game. You know, I can jump back into my 2D roots a little bit more easily. So thank you, Side Effects. I appreciate it. Jacko, definitely appreciate it, buddy. Um, and, uh, you know, yeah, and I know, I mean, Jacques, like, you know, the ZBrush interface is kind of funky, but this is where I try to do it very simple. And, of course, when I teach, I just go over top of it where you're, in every single kind of program, don't worry about the 100% of the program. You don't use 100% of the program, ever. If you do, you honestly just, it, you would go insane. You use about 20% of the program that you need to do your job. That's it. It's just like a piece of paper and a pencil is a program to a traditional artist. All they need is to do that. They don't need anything else fancy to kind of, you know, the special erasers, everything else. They're, it's a tool. So you find the tools that you're pulling from the toolbox, ZBrush, and then you're just utilizing that to do your job. That's all you have to think about it. It's, it is kind of intimidating, for sure. That's why I try to do these episodes, right? That's why I teach on the side, to help those to kind of, you know, especially if you have a traditional ability, what's your traditional ability? What do you actually really need to utilize it? your job into ZBrush and you get in and out and make it fun. So that's all this should be. This is fun. 
I had no clue what the hell I was making today again. I was, you know, I could be kind of nervous and go, oh, but I just was like, all right, I don't give a shit. I'm just having fun talking to you guys and creating something and playing off of it. Now, um, and you saw me weave and make up stuff as I went along. So just have fun with it. That's all you have to do. And if you're intimidated and you go into it, it's, you know, I mean, <laughs> it's it's going to be intimidating. So just relax and don't worry about what you get. That's why I made that, that uh, where people do a whole bunch of tertiary detail on top of a pile of shit, you know what I mean? Like that sprinkles on a, a shit donut. You know, you get past, you go way beyond what you need to. Just relax and just take baby steps and, and you'll get it. Um, and uh, it, it takes time. So, but uh, absolutely, Cat Waits, appreciate it. <laughs> Good name. So... Uh, Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate it. Uh, Big Snow, I, I, I started from like, a, I had a piece of a T-Rex. I used some of it to kind of show. And I just brought in spheres and used um, uh, sculptures, whatever, to kind of like piece and move and just jump a bunch of crap in together. So it's just kind of, and with some Dynamesh on, redefining some of the head to get better details for textures. That's it. So, but drop me a line anytime, guys. If you have any more questions, just let me know. Always happy to. Um, if you guys know of any, if any of you guys work in a, in a house that are looking for a concept character guy, I'm looking at the moment. My projects are kind of finished up and I'm looking for the next one to, to done. Or if you guys are interested in any kind of teaching, uh, I do that on the side. You can drop me a line anytime. So if not, you know, ask me questions, feel free. I'm not going to charge you. Just drop me a line and ask me questions. So thanks, guys. Have a great weekend. All right. I appreciate you joining, showing up, and I hope to talk to you guys soon. Take care.